Hello and welcome to Cloud Learners Journey Part 3 of Azure Solutions Architect Real Exam Questions and Answers with Explanation. And you can also find reference links in the description. To become an Azure Solutions Architect, you must pass AZ104 and AZ305 exam. You can also go through AZ104 exam video series and links are available in the description. If you like the video, please do like, share, comment and subscribe to our Cloud Learners Journey channel to help you pass AZ305 exam and become an Azure Solutions Architect. Question 1. You store web access logs data in Azure Blob Storage. You plan to generate monthly reports from the access logs. You need to recommend an automated process to upload the data to Azure SQL Database every month. What should you include in the recommendations? And the options are A. Microsoft SQL Server Migration Assistant SSMA B. Data Migration Assistant DMA C. AZ Copy D. Azure Data Factory And correct option is D. Azure Data Factory. You can create a data factory pipelines that copies data from Azure Block Storage to Azure SQL Database. Configuration pattern applies to copying from a file based data store to a relational data store. The required steps are create a data factory, create Azure Storage and Azure SQL Database linked services, create Azure Blob and Azure SQL Database datasets, create a pipeline contains a copy activity, start a pipeline run monitor the pipeline and the activity runs. Next, question number two. You have an on-premises database that you plan to migrate to Azure. You need to design this database architecture to meet the following requirements. First requirement, support scaling up and down. Second requirement, support geo-redundant backups. Third requirement, support a database of up to 75 TB. Fourth requirement, be optimized for online transaction processing OLTP. What should you include in the design? To answer, select the appropriate options in the answer area. Answer area for service, we have an options Azure SQL database, Azure SQL managed instance, Azure Synapse Analytics, SQL Server and Azure Virtual Machines. And for service tier, we have options basic, business critical, general purpose, hyperscale premium standard and the correct options are for service it's azure sql database and for service tier it's hyperscale database size always depends on the underlying service tiers example basic business critical hyperscale it supports databases of up to 100 tb with hyperscale service tier model azure sql database and sql managed instance enable you to dynamically add more resources to your database with minimal doubt time Question number three, you need to design a highly available Azure SQL database that meets the following requirements. First requirement, failover between replicas of the database must occur without any data loss. Second, the database must remain available in the event of a zone outage. Third, costs must be minimized. Which deployment options should you use? And the options are A, Azure SQL database hyperscale, B, Azure SQL database premium, C. Azure SQL Database Basic D. Azure SQL Managed Instance General Purpose And the correct option is B. Azure SQL Database Premium Azure SQL Database Premium tier supports multiple redundant replicas for each database that are automatically provisioned in the same data center within a region. The design leverages the SQL Server always on technology and provides resilience to server failures with 99.99% availability. Next, question number four. You are planning an Azure storage solution for sensitive data. The data will be accessed daily. The data set is less than 10 GB. You need to recommend a storage solution that meets the following requirements. First requirement, all the data written to storage must be retained for five years. Second requirement, once the data is written, the data can only be read. Modifications and deletion must be prevented. Third requirement, after five years, the data can be deleted but never modified. Fourth requirement, data access charges must be minimized. What should you recommend? To answer, select the appropriate options in the answer area. First storage account type options are premium block blobs, general purpose V2 with cool access tier for blobs, general purpose V2 with hot access tier for blobs. Configuration to prevent modification and deletions options are container access level, container access policy, storage account resource log. Correct answers are first storage account type, 
general purpose V2 with hot access tier for blobs and for configuration to prevent modifications and deletion container access policy. Immutable storage for Azure Blob Storage enables users to store business critical data in a write once read many state. Write once read many state data cannot be modified or deleted for a user specific interval. By configuring immutability policies for blob data, you can protect your data from overwrites and deletes. Next, question number five. You have an on premises file server that stores 2 TB of data files. You plan to move the data files to Azure Blob Storage in the West Europe Azure region. You need to recommend a storage account type to store the data files and a replication solution for the storage account. The solution must meet the following requirements. First requirement, be available if a single Azure data center fails. Second requirement, support storage tiers. Third requirement, minimize cost. What should you recommend? To answer, select the appropriate options in the answer area. For storage account type, options are premium block blobs, standard general purpose v1, standard general purpose v2. And for redundancy, options are geo redundant storage, zone redundant storage, locally redundant storage, read access geo redundant storage. And the correct answers are for storage account type, it's standard general purpose v2. Standard general purpose v2 meets the requirements and minimizes the cost. For redundancy, it's zone redundant storage. Zone redundant storage protects against a data center failure while minimizing the cost. Next, question number six. You need to design a highly available Azure SQL database that meets the following requirements. First requirement, failover between replicas of the database must occur without any data loss. Second requirement, the database must remain available in the event of a zone outage. Third requirement, cost must be minimized. Which deployment options should you use? The options are A. Azure SQL Database Serverless B. Azure SQL Database Business Critical C. Azure SQL Database Basic D. Azure SQL Database Standard And the correct option is A. Azure SQL Database Serverless Azure SQL Database Serverless allows for zone redundant configuration. This feature utilizes Azure availability zones to replicate database across multiple physical locations within an Azure region. By selecting zone redundancy, you can make your serverless database resilient to a much larger set of failures, including catastrophic data center outage without any changes of the application logic. Here the incorrect options are Azure SQL Database Business Critical is a more expensive solution. Azure SQL Database Basic doesn't provide zone redundancy. Azure SQL Database Standard is a more expensive solution. Next, question number seven. You need to design a storage solution for an app that will store large amounts of frequently used data. The solution must meet the following requirements. First requirement, maximize data throughput. Second requirement, prevent the modifications of data for one year. Third requirement, minimize latency for read and write operations. Which Azure storage account type and storage service should you recommend? To answer, select the appropriate options in the answer area. Answer area, first storage account type options are Blob storage, block blob storage, file storage, storage v2 with premium performance, storage v2 with standard performance. And for storage service, options are blob file table. For storage account type, it's block blob storage. Block blob is a premium storage account type for block blobs and append blobs. Recommended for scenarios with high transaction rates or scenarios that use smaller objects or require consistently low storage latency. For storage service, it's blob. The archive tier is an offline tier for storing blob data that is readily accessed. The archive tier offers the lowest storage cost but higher data retrieval cost and latency compared to the online tiers. Next, question number 8. You have 100 servers that run Windows Server 2012 R2 and host Microsoft SQL Server 2014 instances. The instances host database that have the following characteristics. Toad procedures are implemented by using CLR. The largest database is currently 3 TB. None of the databases will ever exceed 4 TB. You plan to move all the data from SQL Server to Azure. You need to recommend a service to host the database. The solution must meet the following requirements. First requirement, whenever possible, minimize management overhead for the migrated databases. Ensure that users can authenticate by using Azure Active Directory credentials. Third requirement, minimize the number of databases changes required to facilitate the migration. What should you include in the recommendation? 
and the options are a azure sql database elastic pools b azure sql managed instance c azure sql database single databases d sql server 2016 on azure virtual machines and the correct option is b azure sql managed instance sql managed instance allows existing sql server customers to lift and shift their on premises applications to the cloud with minimal application and data center changes at the same time sql managed instances preserves all past capabilities like automatic patching and version update automatic backups high availability that drastically reduce management overhead and tco next question number 9 You have an Azure subscription that contains an Azure Key Vault named KV1 and a virtual machine named VM1. VM1 runs Windows Server 2022 Azure Edition. You plan to deploy an ASP.NET Core-based application named App1 to VM1. You need to configure App1 to use a system assigned managed activity to retrieve secrets from Key1. The solution must minimize development effort. What should you do? To answer, select the appropriate options in the answer area. For configure app one to use OAuth 2.0 options are authorization code grant flows, client credentials grant flows, implicit grant flows. And for configure app one to use a REST API call to retrieve an authentication token from the options are Azure Instance Metadata Service MDS Endpoint, OAuth 2.0 Access Token Endpoint of Azure AD. or 2.0 access token endpoint of microsoft identity platform answer for configure app one to use or 2.0 is client credentials grant flows and for configure app one to use rest api call to retrieve an authentication token from the or 2.0 access token endpoint of azure ad in the client credentials flow permissions are granted directly to the application itself by an administrator when the app presents a token to a resource the resource enforces that the app itself has authorization to perform an action since there is no user involved in the authentication next question number 10 you plan to deploy azure databricks to support a machine learning application Data engineers will mount an Azure Data Lake storage account to the Databricks file system. Permissions to folders are granted directly to the data engineers. You need to recommend a design for the planned Databricks deployment. The solution must meet the following requirements. First requirement: ensure that the data engineers can only access folders to which they have permissions. Second requirement: minimize development effort. Third requirement: minimize costs. What should you include in the recommendation? To answer, select the appropriate options in the answer area. For Databricks SKU, options are Premium and Standard. For Cluster Configuration, options are Credential Pass-Through, Managed Identities, ML Flow, a Runtime that contains Photon, Secret Scope. Answer for Databricks SKU is Premium. Premium Databricks SKU is required for Credentials Pass-Through. Answer for Cluster Configuration is Credentials Pass-Through. When you enable Azure Data Lake Storage Credentials Pass-Through for your cluster, commands that you run on the cluster can read and write data in Azure Data Lake Storage without requiring to configure service principal credentials for access to storage. Thank you for watching part 3 of Azure Solutions Architect Real Exam Questions and Answers. We hope you found it informative and helpful. If you like the video, please like, share, subscribe and comment to our channel for more related topics. We look forward to continuing the journey with you in next videos. Thank you.